seen tonight, but will return tomorrow night at this time on Wave 3. Ready, Sutton, and Kentucky basketball fans, the cry has let the season begin. And no one echoes that sentiment louder than Winston Bennett. Out all last year with a knee injury, Bennett could be the biggest factor of all toward a highly successful season. Then there's guard Rex Chapman. Already being touted as an All-American and only a sophomore and coming off of a brilliant freshman season. And freshman Leron Ellis, who heads up an impressive crop of freshman talent. Indeed, a new season is here. All prevalent any time the Russians come to town. And tonight, they're here at Lexington Grupp Arena to take on Eddie Sutton's Kentucky Wildcats. Good evening, everyone. I'm Marty Brenneman, and so pleased to be working with a fella whose name is absolute magic among Kentucky basketball fans, a member of Rupp's Runs back in the 60s, Larry Conley. Larry, an exhibition game notwithstanding, you think a lot of questions could be answered about this Kentucky ball club tonight. Marty, indeed I do. I think we're going to have a few questions and some light shed on this season. There are really three burning questions right now for this club. One is Winston Bennett. How healthy is he? Is he 70%? Is he 100%? Secondly, you've got to look at the center position. How much more production can they get out of that position they've got to have a lot more if they're going to be a great team and thirdly you've got to look at this freshman class this is their coming out party we're going to find out how good they really are and i think the most burning question of the night is can marty brenham and larry conley get through the night without butchering these russian names the absolute 64 dollar question we are also pleased to be working with rob bromley rob is standing by with university of kentucky assistant coach james dickey rob Assistant James Dickey will join us prior to every ball game this season to give us an inside look. And James, what will the keys be in the ball game tonight? Rob, we feel like we can score offensively, and the big keys in the basketball game are going to come on the defensive end of the court. Number one, defensive containment. The Soviets like to penetrate, drive around this man, force a help situation with our offside defense, kick it out to the three-point shot. A big key in the basketball game. The second key is transition defense. If we take a shot from the perimeter, the Soviets like to run a man out deep, get the long rebound, and throw it. Our defensive balance must get back here and here so that we do not give up the uh, easy basket on the other end. The third key is defensive board play. The Soviets are excellent rebounders. Our big people must rebound these three critical areas, and our guards must come back in for the long rebound so that we do not give up the second and third shot. Thank you, James. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk with preseason All-American Rex Chapman. And the starting lineups are just ahead, so stay with us. If you had all the experience of yesterday, with all the skill and innovation of today, you couldn't lose. Every day, Jack Taylor and Joe Donovan take the same road home. But today, they went a little out of their way. Give you a hand. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. This Bud's... For all the guys who go out of their way. This Bud's for you. Let's say you need a loan. You take off work and go to the bank. And you put down your life history on a bunch of forms. Then you wait. Well, not at First National. Now you can call in your loan request eight to eight weekdays and nine to four Saturdays. And we'll get back to you within an hour. If you need a loan, any loan, just pick up the phone. There's been some question about the correct pronunciation of this sensible new import. Psst. It rhymes with Sunday. Yes, Drive a new 87 Topaz for only $95.95. Every 87 Topaz in stock, only $95.95. Hurry, the cars with the most equipment will be the first to go. Bluegrass, Bluegrass, has it Bluegrass Lincoln Mercury, across from Bluegrass Isuzu.
Bernie Brenneman with Larry Conley back at Rupp Arena here in Lexington, Kentucky as the Kentucky Wildcats get set to take on the Soviet national team playing a sixth game in the last eight days. They come off of a loss last night at Chapel Hill against North Carolina, 73-71, putting their record on this U.S. tour at six wins and three losses. Larry Conley, I don't think you could fault Alexander Gamelski's ball club for maybe being a little bit tired. Oh, I think they probably are, having played such a rigorous schedule in the last six days. And plus the fact they had to go to Chapel Hill and play. I mean, when you're playing eight games, nine games, all of them on the road, and you're having to get on airplanes and you're flying in, playing the day, it's almost like a pro basketball schedule, and that's in essence what they have. We talked about the questions that could be answered as far as this Kentucky team is concerned. They are playing a team that Eddie Sutton considers to be the best team they'll see all year long. Well, I had a chance to look at them earlier, and I will tell you, they're very good. Well, we'll see tonight. Right now, let's go to PA announcer Jim Engel for the introduction of tonight's starting lineup. A couple of number changes for the Soviet national team. Number 10, Volodis Walters, will not be playing tonight. Dmitry Minaev will be wearing number 19 rather than number 16. Dmitry Minaev wearing number 19. And Alexander Ohatnikov will be wearing number 10 rather than number 17. Your starters for Kentucky, number 25, Winston Bennett. Number 15, Ed Davender. Number 55, Cedric Jenkins. Number 44, Rob Block. And number 3, Rex Chapman. There they look at the officials tonight. On your left, Ron Spittler out of the Big 8. In the center, Nolan Fine. On the right, Tom Frame. They are both Atlantic Coast Conference officials. So a good trio of officials working tonight's ball game. And we'll be back with the opening tip-off. The Kentucky Wildcats and the Soviet national team right after this. <laughs> When you're searching for something better, more modern, refreshing, tune into the taste of new Coke. Catch the wave. Coke. Managing this store is a real challenge, but I can count on my share of the reward for doing the job right. I'll tell you something else you can count on, too. That's finishing school. You'll have a tough time getting a good job without it. So don't drop out. Get your diploma because you won't be a kid forever. Visit your Ashland station or Super America store for a copy of our free brochure, Dropping the Dropout Rate. If you had all the experience of yesterday, with all the skill and innovation of today, you couldn't lose. No one in America sells more trucks than number one, your Ford dealer. And to celebrate, he's having a number one sales drive on all his 87 and brand new 88 trucks. Now get $500 cash back on America's number one selling full-size pickup, Ford F-150. On America's number one selling compact pickup, Ford Ranger. Even on every Ford Bronco 2. Add to that free factory air conditioning on specially equipped models. All before you get your best deal, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. And we're set to go. Tom Frame will put the ball airborne as they get set to jump in at center court. Rob Locke will do it for the University of Kentucky. Alexander Bellastini for the Soviet Union. And Sharunas Marcellonis takes the opening tip-off. Gets it up the floor quickly as Kentucky drops back into a man-to-man. -man. And the Soviets take a 2-0 lead as Vladimir Homiches knocks in the first shot attempt of the night. It's the Soviets 2 and Kentucky nothing. And now the Rupp Arena crowd starts up as Davinder brings it front court for UK. Mario, watch the Russians. They play a very soft defense. They don't go out and pressure the ball a great deal, except in Chapman's case, they may come after him. Locke has it stuffed back in his face, but the ball picked off on the baseline by Bennett. Locke with a follow shot, and we're tied at 2. If they're going to have any success, they have to get it from Locke. Davinder with a steal and lost it out of bounds. And the Soviets will hang out of the basketball. Well, here comes Marcellonis. 
You'll hear that name a few yes, times sir. tonight. Outstanding talent, left-hander, mindful of one of the former greats in the NBA and before that at UCLA, Gail Goodrich. Here's Holman just driving. A great defensive play by Chapman as he rejects the ball. And Locke kicks it out to Davinder. Now Chapman at the other end. 2-2 ball game here in the early moments. Chapman for three. And the Cats take a 5-2 lead. It was interesting. They dropped back off of Chapman. Marcellinas, who's been guarding him, just pulled back on the inside and said, throw it up there. I don't think he wants to do that too often. I don't think so. Homichus working in the backcourt with Marcellonis. Sergei Tarakanov gets it inside. Marcellonis in traffic. He had 28 points in 25 minutes of that aborted game against Indiana University before Bob Knight took his team off the court. In a game that, of course, resulted in a forfeit in favor of the Soviet Union a few nights ago. Now watch the Russian defense. They'll pack it back in. It's a man-to-man -man defense, but they play a lot of offside help, and it's very soft. Look how much room they give Jenkins out front. Give Jenkins a boatload. He looks to give it up and does to Bennett. That's Chapman on the baseline being checked by Homichus. Ed Davender, Cedric Jenkins looking low, and now Bennett. Kentucky being very patient on offense on this trip down the floor. Bennett takes it inside. The bank shot up too strong and gets his own missed shot back. He will follow. And it's Jenkins with a follow shot. Did not get the shot to go, but he'll be on the free throw line. Hey, Marty, that looked good for Bennett. Sure huh? did. 390-some days he's been without the activity of the basketball against another team, and two in a row he went after it. Watch it again. Here's Bennett with a shot. Watch him go and get his own rebound. He comes in, caroms off the hands of two Russian players on the inside. He gets it, good pump fake, takes it back up, and Jenkins there to pull it down and draws the foul. Larry, you think Bennett's chopping at the bit? Oh, you know he is. <laughs> Having to set out that long and as competitive as he is. Here's a young man hoping for a healthy 1987-88 season in Jenkins. Of course, had the stress fracture above the left ankle before last year ever got underway. And... Really did not see all that much action, and they're hoping that he's healthy this year as they are hopeful of a number of different Wildcat players who suffered problems last year, and this club can have the kind of year that a lot of people think it can. Hey! Kentucky picking up full court pressure now. Zone trap, Jenkins on the point, good idea. Cats by two, six, four. Marcellonis, baseline, and not looking for the pass. It ricochets out of bounds off the hands of the Larry Goberoff. Marty, you think the Reds need a good left-hander? <laughs> I'll tell you what, this guy They've got one. a pretty good left-handed pitcher right here. <laughs> Ed Davender looks to the Kentucky bench, and you see the gestures over there from head coach Eddie Sutton and his number one assistant, James Dickey. Davender high to Jenkins. Well, a little bit more pressure now by the Russians. Look how far out they're coming out. Chapman, Chapman lost, lost it. On the dribble, Homages, Marcellonis. He will take it himself, and that'll be a foul against Russ Chapman. Or is it? No. Third turnover against the Soviet Union. Called him for traveling. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty good hit that Chapman took right there. Marcellonis went up with a very strong shot. I thought it was going to be a foul one way or the other. 17-22 to go in the first half. It's 6-4, Kentucky. We're not going to get into discussion about officials, though. There was another coach that took that on the last the other night. Yes, he did. And a foul against the Soviets. This one will go against Sergei Tarakanov. That'll be the second team foul against the Soviet Union. Foul is on Tarakanov. And Tarakanov has had both of the Soviet fouls. So well, Chapman will trigger on the baseline as Kentucky breaks offensively. Davender had the shot, has it knocked away by Marcellonis, but goes back to pick it up. You know, for a guy at 6'4", 190, Marcellonis is very, very quick. One of three players that have been drafted by NBA ball clubs. They switched that time. Marcellonis gave it up. Chapman for three again. Just a little bit short, and the Soviets with Alexander Bellastini rebounding. Bellastini gets it back, setting up high. Kicks it outside. And now it goes off Locke's head and out of bounds. The Soviets will keep it. You know, we've had a flurry of activity, but we haven't had a whole lot of scoring. Not a whole lot at all. Kentucky 6, as you look at Alexander Gomelski, considered to be the father of basketball in the Soviet Union. Homich is in trouble. Marcellonis travel. Well, Larry, the Kentucky defense seems to be bothering the Soviets. I tell you, they're putting a lot more pressure on the Russians than I think Eddie Sutton really expected. 
You know, he's been somewhat disappointed, been, been disappointed in this club in preseason. He didn't feel like that defensively they were up to what he thought they should be, but tonight they played pretty well the first couple of minutes. So far, so good with 16.25 to go in the half. Davinder Bennett, he wanted to go low to lock. Now he does, backing Bellastini in, had it slapped away by Tarakanov, and he leads the break. Marcellonis back to the cutting. Tarakanov intercepted by Davinder. And now Chapman. And Bellastini can't believe the call by Nolan Fine. Neither can coach Alexander Gomelski. Hey, Marty, that's an American reaction to a foul. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> Let's watch it again. Alexander <laughs> Bellastini committing a foul. Good bounce pass by Davinder. Chapman making the right lane fill. He gets the foul right there. Bellastini with that incredulous look saying, me? So Chapman on the line. Last year, 73.5% proficiency for a young man who led the Kentucky team in scoring as a freshman at 16 points a game. And right now, the Cats only one out of three from the free throw line. And I'm sure that Eddie Sutton is hoping that he does not have a replay of all the problems that the Wildcats had at the free throw line last season. Meanwhile, the Soviets make a change in the backcourt. Teach Sock, who normally starts along with Marcellonis. Marcellonis sits down. Fourth point for Rex Chapman, and Kentucky now leads by three at 7-4. Kentucky pressuring after the made free throw. Partially deflected, I believe, by Rob Locke, and here comes Davinder. He's in a hurry. The good defense by the Soviets. As Teach Sock got a hand in there to deflect the ball out of bounds, a pass intended for Rob Locke underneath. Marty, there's one item that's going to make Kentucky such a competitive basketball team this year, and that's Ed Davender handling the basketball and getting it to Rex Chapman. He's a great ball handler. He really pushes the ball up the floor very quickly. He can score when he needs to. He's just a complete player. He's one of my favorites. I think he's one of the best guards in the country. Rex Chapman drives. Shovel shot up. No good. Lockman tried for the tip. Couldn't get it, and here comes Russian. Teach Sock left open for three. Lock is there, uncontested for the rebound. So they're going back and forth, Larry, and we continue to see very little offense. The Russians love to use that three-point goal. They didn't use it to too much effectiveness in Chapel Hill the other night. They were 5 of 25 from the three-point range. Nice pass inside from Bennett to Davinder. Had nowhere to go with the ball, and Russia forces a turnover. Homages to the breaking Tarakanov. Contact between Winston Bennett and the Soviets. And the whistle stops play from official Ryan Spittler. They're going to call goaltending, so credit the basket to Sergei Tarakanov. The one thing the Russians do very well is fill the lanes on the fast break. Watch Tarakanov from the right side. Lays it up. There's the foul. It looked like right there Bennett was the one who rejected the ball, and they got him for goaltending. I'll tell you, transition is the name of the game for the Soviets, isn't it? Well, they run the fast <laughs> break so, so much different than the college teams do. They very seldom put the ball on the floor. They like to move it with the pass and not with the dribble, and they get out very, very quickly. Now, CM Newton said a few days ago they run the fast break the way it should be run. Winston Bennett to Ed Davender. Kentucky nursing a one-point lead. Is locked with a kick out. Gets it right back. He moves on the taller Bellastini. It's rejected. Bennett follows. No good. Jenkins up. He got it. Boy, what a great offensive effort that time by the Wildcats. All three inside people getting after. And that's the second time in the early moments that we've seen outstanding offensive play on the boards for Kentucky. Why don't we talk about the production out of that middle? Maybe locks come to play this year. Homich is getting a pick from Bellastini. He gets off the jump shot and buries it. Homich is one of those guards you cannot leave open. He and Marcellinas probably are the two best shooters on this Soviet team. They say Homich just spends hours upon hours in the gym back in the Soviet Union perfecting his jump shot. He has scored four points. And the Soviets are down by one at 9-8. Rob Locke looks to Bennett Lowe. Nothing there. Now Davinder. Matched up against Keith Sock. Not a whole lot of pressure from the Soviet team. They're backing off. Chapman goes one-on-one, -on -one, stops, pops. A little bit too strong. Rob Locke does it again on the boards. Has it rejected. Out of bounds, and it'll belong to UK. Locke wants a foul. He's not getting it. Well, they talk about increased confidence and the feeling that he can play in this league after three up and down years. He has been impressive here in the first half. Time out on the floor with 13 minutes and 53 seconds to go in half one from Lexington's Rupp Arena. The score, Kentucky 9, the Soviet Nationals 8.
when my wife found out that Long John Silvers is offering four Norman Rockwell mugs for the holidays for just 99 cents apiece, who do you think was first in line? Bingo. This holiday season, come in for your Rockwell mugs and get another great classic, Long John Silvers shrimp, fish, and chicken dinner for the low holiday price of just $3.99. Long John Silvers. And uh, don't forget your mugs. This month's for all that you it's do. It's all tied up, Miles. You're in. One ten, one ten. Only four seconds left to play. Sanger at the top of the key. Shoots. Off the rim. Miles with the rebound. It's good. Milwaukee, Kevin Miles. You make America work. Kevin. Kevin Miles. A lot of dreams here, huh? For everyone who works toward their dream, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. Welcome to professional basketball, son. The way some places make hamburger patties, it's no wonder their burgers can turn out thin, dry, and hard. Well, at Hardee's, we make our quarter pound patties more gently, so they cook up all thick, juicy. It's a complicated machine, but it's based on an idea that's quite old-fashioned. Because at Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Steepleton, the level best in Louisville. For over 75 years, Steepleton's has been the first and foremost supplier of fine billiard tables to the Louisville area, made right here in Louisville. Steepleton pool tables are built with expert care and attention. A table can be custom made to your specifications with fast delivery and prompt service. Steepleton's, the level best, downtown and St. Matthews. Kentucky leading the Soviet Union 9-8 with 13.53 remaining in the first half here at Jam Pack Rupp Arena. It has been an up-and-down basketball game, pretty much what we expected, with quite an impressive showing, Larry, on the offensive boards by the Wildcats. Well, if you're going to have a successful year in college basketball, particularly at the level Kentucky plays, you've got to have that inside rebounding. And at this point, Bennett, Locke, and Jenkins, all three doing yeoman's work inside. Kentucky 10th in the SEC last year in rebounding uh, per game average, and that's an area that they look to improve on with the return of Winston Bennett. Davender, let's fly. He gets his own rebound, the baseline jumper. Off the mark, the follow shot fails to go, and again, we see almost a carbon copy of Kentucky's early game domination, especially on the offensive board. Well, the first six and a half minutes are indicative of what kind of year Winston Bennett's going to have. He's going to have an all-SEC year. He is doing great work on the inside. He's doing what he used to do two years ago, getting in there and getting those offensive rebounds and shutting down the best player that the Reds have. Let's watch him again right here. Good, strong rebound. He takes it up, and Bellastini right on the arm as he started back up. It's encouraging, Marty. I'm telling you. Winston Bennett on the free throw line trying to add to a Kentucky one-point lead. Fifth-year senior who went down with that knee injury in the preseason last year, had surgery, had to sit and watch as Kentucky went to an 18-11 and 11 record. And I'll tell you, what we've seen here early would certainly indicate that he's not shy at all. It's the same old Winston Bennett before that knee problem. Changes for Kentucky. LaRon Ellis, highly regarded 6'11 freshman out of California. And the man with the outstanding body, Richard Madison, senior from Memphis, Tennessee, checks in for Kentucky. Trevor Jenkins, Rob Locke sit down. And with the catch in front, 11-8, Kentucky... Goes to defense zone. as the Soviets make the inbounds pass. Zone press, Marty. They've got Ellis on the ball, and the other two guys are playing the zone. Ball goes in the corner, and then you trap with those guys, the point man in the corner, and the Russians beat it. Alexander Volkov handled for the first time tonight to Bellastini. Back outside, it goes to Teet Sock. Chapman matching him step for step. Volkov cuts, got it, kicks it back outside. The uncontested three-point attempt by Tarakanov fails to go. Davender. Weaving his way in and out of traffic. Put it up, foul. And that'll be number three on Sergei Tarakanov. 
Kentucky doing a great job of their fast break and putting pressure on the Russians. We talked about how quickly the Russians I got down it. the floor. Kentucky's doing a great job of getting the ball on the break. Ignited right there by that young man, Ed Davender. He's pushing it up the floor and putting the pressure on the Russian. Right there you see the foul committed by them. Ed Davender doing a great job of handling the ball and controlling the team. Well, if Alexander Gomelsky reads newspapers, uh, Eddie Sutton might have tried to decoy him because all Eddie talked about was a great transition by the Soviets. And as you say, right now, Kentucky beating them down the floor. Yeah, they really are. And the thing about it is when you do that, it really puts the pressure back on the defense. And they have to get back on their heels. And Davender is so very quick. I like his uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar glasses, too. Took a shot in the eye this past summer in a pickup game from Kyle Macy. And apparently the doctors told him should it happen again, it could result in a detached retina. Don't That's tell me the Macy played please. defense. I don't, don't want to hear that. <laughs> Two successes by Ed Davender, and Kentucky enjoys its biggest lead, 13-8, with just over 13 to go, and here comes Russia getting it quickly up the floor, and the bank shot goes by Marcellona. Well, Marty, did they handle that press? Three passes and a shot from 18 feet. Second field goal for Marcellona. It is 13-10, as the Soviets answer at the other end with a hoop. Here's Davender controlling. Rex Chapman, Richard Madison, Winston Bennett, Leron Ellis. Making up the Kentucky lineup. Chapman fakes right, goes left, gets inside, puts up the arching jump shot, no good. Bellastini with a kick out. Homich is up to Marcellonis to the cutting Volkov. And all Kentucky could do was foul. Richard Madison kept the Russian from getting the layup, but paid the price as he commits a personal foul. And that's twice now we've seen the Soviets really blow down the floor offensively. Well, we previewed it in the top of the show, and you see it right here. Marcellonis with a good pass. He caught him breaking on the right side, and it was a good move by Volkov to get inside of Madison there, and Madison drew the foul. One of the three Soviets who have been drafted by NBA ball clubs, Alexander Volkov, drafted a year ago by the Atlanta Hawks. It's first free throw for the Russians tonight. Yep. First foul against the University of Kentucky. Volkov off the bench to get a point, and what was a five-point catch lead now has dwindled down to two, 13-11. Ellis working on Bellastini. Didn't get the roll, and the Soviets rebound. Looks like the Soviet Union is trying to pick the tempo up a little bit more on their end now. Marcellona's cross-courting to Sock. Now to Volkov. He takes it hard to the basket. I'll tell you what, they're going to have to break out the M16s pretty soon. <laughs> they're really going after each other inside. Five unanswered points by the quintessential Big Red Machine. And it is 13-13 with 12.05 to go in the first half. Richard Madison looks inside to Ellis. Chapman right back to the freshman from California. Davinder had a notion and throws up a prayer that goes unanswered and a whistle stops play. And the foul's going to be on Ellis. Well, Leron Ellis picks up the personal foul, only the second team foul against Kentucky. And with that, we've got a Kentucky timeout. Time remaining first half, 11.55 to go. With Larry Conley and Rob Bromley, I'm Marty Brenneman. The score here at the timeout, Kentucky 13 and the Soviet Union likewise. has built a quality sports program and the state of Kentucky is improving its quality of life with new industry, commerce and public works projects. Since 1946, Peters Construction has been a part of the statewide growth by providing quality construction. Peters projects include the new Curtis Murray Asu plant in Lebanon, Kentucky, a new health and physical education building at Kentucky Wesleyan College and a new addition to the Owensboro Davies County Hospital. Peters Construction, serving Kentucky and surrounding states from Owensboro and Lexington. To look at these cards, you'd think the University of Kentucky was getting in the credit card business. Well, they are, sort of. 
Now, First National Bank is offering special Visa and MasterCards that make automatic contributions to university programs every time you use them. Apply at First National for your University of Kentucky Visa or MasterCard. Supporting UK is just that easy. When my wife found out that Long John Silvers is offering four Norman Rockwell mugs for the holidays for just 99 cents apiece, who do you think was first in line? Bingo! This holiday season, come in for your Rockwell mugs and get another great classic. Long John Silver's Shrimp, Fish, and Chicken Dinner for the low holiday price of just $3.99. Long John Silver's. And uh, don't forget your mugs. Tie game 13-13 with almost 12 minutes to go in the first half here at Rupp Arena. This reminder, the Radisson Plaza Hotel in Lexington is offering a great getaway, guaranteed to take the chill off the winter weather. Receive deluxe accommodations and a complimentary continental breakfast, all for just $59. To put some sunshine in your life, call 1-800-333-3333 and ask for the great winter adventure. Pace continues to be the same, Mr. Conley, but uh, so far neither team doing anything to write home about. Uh, Kentucky 3 for 17 from the floor and the Russians 6 out of 10. Well, you can look at the field goal percentage. The U.S. is doing, I mean, U.S. Kentucky doing very, very well. <laughs> And when you look at the other side of it, the rebounding, Kentucky has 13 rebounds to the Russians' four. Kentucky coming back with Richard Madison, Leron Ellis, Winston Bennett, Ed Davender, and Rex Chapman, Teach Sock, Homachus, Marcellonis, Bellastini, and Alexander Volkov for the Soviet Union. Here's a jumper off the baseline, a little bit too strong by Homachus, and Ellis cleared. Davender attacking. The senior drives as it knocked away and plays outside to Chapman. Madison whistle off the ball as Bennett and Homer just bang each other away from the basketball. And apparently they got Winston Bennett. I'm wondering if the Russians have played as physical a game in their other stops in this country as they're having tonight. This is a very physical basketball game. Well, if nothing else, the Soviets over the years have been noted for being a very physical team. The thing that Eddie Sutton has pointed up about this team, much more fluidity among the Russian players now, which I guess is bad news for the U.S. because that's an indication that they're starting to catch up even more. The Soviet Union with a chance to take the lead. Marcellonis had the screen, elects to try and create on his own, which he did. He goes to the lane, hits a jump shot, draws a foul, and will go to the free throw line. You talk about strength. I mean, he had a guy hanging on his arm who weighs about 215, and he still got it up. Watch this move right here. He goes up, Hansen's right there on his arm. He still gets the shot off, gets it down, and goes to the line for a three-point chance. By the way, we might want to mention to our fans, Marty, that we're playing NCAA rules here in Very this basketball point. game. Uh, when we travel outside this country, our teams play international rules, and there are a few differences, but we are playing NCAA rules in this game. Reggie Hansen in the Kentucky lineup. That's who committed the foul to create the three-point play by Sharunas Marcellonis. Rex Chapman, long bomb, got it. Three-pointer is second of the night by Chapman. Seven-point first half for the sophomore from Owensboro, Kentucky. And the Cats have come back to tie it up at 16. Marcellonis almost threw it away. Sock controls. Backing off against the defense of Rex Chapman. Kentucky doing a much and better job. That ought to be an offensive foul, and it is. He used the arm to try and clear out. Sock with a pained look on his face, but they got him for the personal foul. Watch Rex Chapman. Good defensive position. Move your feet. Get your body in front of the man with the ball. He did. He drew the foul from Sock. Excellent defensive position. And that man right there can be very happy about that. Indeed. 16 fouls now against the Soviet Nationals. So Kentucky, who trailed by three before the trio shot by Chapman, now tries to take the lead. Rex driving, stopping, puts it up, and in. Nine points for Chapman. I'll tell you one thing, I don't know that at any point throughout the collegiate basketball season will you see two finer guards on the floor at one time than Rex Chapman and Sharunas Marcellonis. It's fun to watch them play against each other because not only are they good offensively, but they work very hard on the defensive end. You know, in basketball, we talk so much about the offensive abilities of the players, but these two guys really play extremely well on defense. 
18-16 Kentucky, halfway point of the first half, and the Soviets will trigger. Homichus, Marcellonis, Tietzak gets a pick from Victor Volkov, puts it up, no good. Ellis tried to keep it alive, and Bellastini was on his back. Nice job by Ellis blocking off the board and not allowing Bellastini to get the inside position. Three personal fouls on Alexander Bellastini. I think maybe Laurent got a few tips from his dad years ago and how to block out. Not a bad teacher. Not a bad teacher. Not Leroy, a bad player. That's right. Leroy Ellis, longtime NBA player and, of course, now an assistant coach at the University of Southern California as you look at the head man with the Soviet Union, Alexander Gomelsky. Six Olympic Russian teams he's coached. Got a great story to tell you about him. Did you know that in the 76 Olympics in Montreal that he was a reporter for TASS? I reported back on the coach of the Russian team and ripped him so bad he got the that job. he got the job. <laughs> I didn't know that. Is that right? That's a great score. Leron Ellis cans a free throw. Kentucky up by three as you look briefly at a portion of the big, big crowd here. Derek Miller checking in now for Reggie Hansen. So Eddie Sutton starting to liberally substitute. Loose ball. Picked up by Alexander Volkov. 1916 Cats. We're under 10 to go in the first half. Barcelona, one on one against Davender. Well, good movement by Davender. Good foot movement. Makes the three pointer, gets closer. Volkov. Barcelona does that a lot. He'll get up in the air and then kick it back out if he doesn't have the shot. They work it low to Bellastini. That sweeping right hand hook shot. Nothing but white jerseys inside. Ellis with a rebound. Up the floor it goes. Here's Derek Miller. Put it up and in. 21-16. Chapman. He says it's our ball. Official Ron Spittler said it's Russian ball. And his opinion is the only one that counts. I think it's obvious Kentucky has scouted this team very carefully because they are really stopping that ball. That break coming out of there after a made basket. Chapman right on top of it on that second pass. Homich is inbounds, and here comes the Soviets again. Baseline drive, Marcellonis, rejected by Ellis, picked up by Chapman. Here come the Cats. Wrap around by Rex, the stop and go, the pass, he tried to thread the needle and almost pulled it off. Sergei Grishayev is now in the Soviet lineup. First appearance of the night for the 6'10 frontliner. He and Ellis are already into it. Yep. Bennett, he got Volkov airborne, but he took too many steps. Marty, I thought that was a pretty good fake. Mm -hmm. I thought he kept his feet, got himself in position after he got him in the air, made the move. Tom Frame didn't see it that way. Six turnover against Kentucky. 21-16, the catch in front. Coming off the pick, Marcellonis. <laughs> Kentucky ball. I'll tell you one thing, you need a lot of bodies for a game like this because it has been, in true bluegrass fashion, racehorse basketball. Both clubs going up and down the floor and they really banged each other on the inside. Officials letting them play. Soviet Union, they have missed six of their last seven field goal attempts. So all of a sudden, the Soviets have gone cold. Ellis backing, backing, kicking it back outside to Davener. Marcellonis has him, swipes at the ball. Here's a jump shot. I bank, it fails to go. Slapped outside by Ellis, picked up by Marcellonis. Pete Sock with a good move to elude Derek Miller. Cross court for the three-point attempt, and Holman just buries it. The one thing the Russians do very well is when they do not have a shot, they'll find the open man. Komachis was standing all by himself on the other side, and we've got a two-point game. 21-19, Kentucky. Inside, turnaround by Ellis. Partially deflected. Bodies all over the place, and they kick it quickly out. Marcellonis controls. Volkov might have traveled. No whistle. Now they blow the whistles. And apparently they're going to call a foul against the Soviet Union. Looks like Winston Bennett set himself for the charge that he expected, and he wasn't disappointed. So the ball goes back to Kentucky as we look at it again. Good defensive position by Bennett. Watch him get himself squared up right there. There's the pass to the inside, but Bennett had already drawn the charge from Volkov. Number one on Alexander Volkov. Ellis leaving and is replaced by another highly touted freshman in Macon, Georgia's Eric Manuel. 
Rob Locke also back in for Kentucky, who has Locke, Manuel, seeing his first action of the night, Chapman, Bennett, and Derek Miller. So Eddie Sutton getting a good look-see at a lot of folks here in the first half of play. You know, Marty, one of the things, too, we need to point out in this game is that if a player plays in this game, he cannot be redshirted. Absolutely. And we're going to have to watch and see tonight to see which players are going to be left out of this game because that may tell us something later on. It's going to be the message about whether a kid's going to be able to play this year or not or whether he's going to sit out. Well, Eddie Sutton has never gone officially on record, but, of course, the rumors persist that John Pelfrey, Darren Feldhouse, and Jonathan Miller will all not see action this season. They'll be redshirts. Homer just working off the screen and inside for the rebound, Grishayev, and he knocks it in. Sergei Grishayev hits a field goal. 21-21 lockup if the basket counts, and he goes to the free throw line. What well, great position on the inside right here. Good pump fake. He got bended up in the air, and as he was coming down, he got him right across the arm. Good move on the inside. Grishov's a very strong kid. 6'10". Looks like he weighs about 210, 215. Second personal foul against Winston Bennett. You know, I say, kid, this is an old team. <laughs> I yeah. shouldn't be talking about kids. These guys are old. The average age of this team is 25. Sergei Grishaya puts up the free throw that had he gotten it to go down would have given the Soviet Union the lead. As it is, 21-21 lockup, seven and a half remaining in the first half. Miller, a good shooter. They check him defensively, and Chapman sets up outside. Miller gets open, Chapman found him, but the ball fails to drop, and it's out of bounds to Kentucky. And we're going to get another look or a look for the first time tonight of another one of what they call the Magnificent Seven. Counting Reggie Hanson, of course, that's the son of the coach, Sean Sutton, who played his high school basketball right here in Lexington and Henry Clay. Rob Locke put it up, rejected, foul called against Grishayev, and Locke will get a pair. I don't think Sergey had anything to complain about <laughs> right there. He got him from the elbow to the knee. Watch it again. Grishoff on the inside, committing the foul against Rob Locke. Good pass in there in the middle. Locke takes it straight to the basket. I'll tell you what, I'm very impressed with the way Locke's played tonight. They're all playing somewhat tentative, and you got a few rusty points and a few rough edges to kind of hone out. But these guys have played, I think, pretty enthusiastically tonight. Kentucky has played hard on the boards. They played good defense. They have been so far somewhat woeful from the free throw line. Twenty two twenty one Kentucky. And Tom Crane blows a whistle. Checks on something apparently with Richard Madison. Grishoff and Locke had gotten into it at midcourt. A little shoving match. Well, I don't think Rob Locke's going to back down against any of these big guys. And the Soviets have eight at six, nine or better. The drive. And on the scene of his pants he goes as contact is made with Richard Madison. Remus Cortinitis, who has just checked in for the Soviet Union, was dropped. On the drive to the hoop, and Madison being called, or did he? No, they called Cortinitis for the personal foul. Eddie Sutton in his third year as head coach of the University of Kentucky after an outstanding career as a head coach at two other institutions in climbing the ladder, Creighton University, and of course coming to Lexington from the University of Arkansas. Yeah, this is a player right here that I think has got to be a very key individual for Kentucky success this year. Richard Madison in his senior year really has been kind of a player that has been a mystery to this entire organization. They don't know what to do with him, and he's a guy who I think if he has a great year could really propel this Kentucky team right into the Final Four. Larry, they can't be a better athlete on the team. No, I agree with that. I, and he's got a great body. It's just that at times he seems to get lost. You know, last year he had a great first half against Ohio State in the NCAA and then just got totally lost in the second half. Here's Volkoff driving a little bit short. He's on Madison's back. No foul. They kick it back outside. Marcellonis, he'll take the three-point attempt. They gave it to him. Why not? Lock rebounds. And now Volkoff with a foul. There didn't seem to be as much contact that time as there did on the previous shot when no whistle was blown. 
Tell you what, you got to start passing out some medals. You may want to start looking at Rob Locke for early going right here because he's doing a very good job of keeping the Russians away from the inside of the basket. Doing a good job on defense. If he could start making his free throws and a few in shot inside shots, he'd have beat having a great first half. So Locke goes back to the free throw line. He's one for two. He scored three points in the half. Kentucky in front, 24 to 21. Maybe he heard us when we started talking about his free throw shooting. Huh? <laughs> well, this is a young man has really struggled for three years. It's, uh, they say, a, it's been a love-hate relationship between Rob Locke and Wildcat fans. He'd like to put all that nonsense to rest in this his final year. Interesting, the Soviet Union is 2 of 4 from the free throw line. Kentucky 12 of 17. Fortinitis misses a three-point attempt. The shot by Volkov blocked by Locke. He throws up the shot. No good. Loose ball. Rex Chapman. Good move to elude Marcellona. Inside manual. Oh, what a pass. Yes, sir. Have mercy. 28 to 21, and Kentucky has its biggest lead on a dazzling pass from Rex Chapman to freshman Eric Manuel. Fortinitis. That almost, for the sake of another inch or two, could have been a four-point play as Manuel got him on the three-point attempt. I think Manuel got hung up a little bit, and when he made the lunge to go after the ball, he just got him on the arm as he went up with the shot. Six-foot-five, Remus Cortinitis, a young man who early on in this tour throughout the United States by the Soviet national team had fallen out of favor with coach Alexander Gomelsky. Recently, apparently, has been playing well because he's out of the doghouse, so to speak, and getting early playing time here in Lexington tonight. His first points, and we've got a timeout called on the floor. So the offense starting to heat up just a little bit. 5.59 remaining in the first half. Kentucky right now the better of it, leading the Soviet national team 28-22, and we'll be back in just a moment. Partnership in a general store offered a promising future to a young man. Hey, John. John, where are you going? A neglected store. I'll be back soon. And Kentucky forest, rich with bird species, gave the world an artist and ornithologist. John James Audubon. Another of the true stories from all around Kentucky, brought to you by Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Apparel, shoes, and fashion. Friday's the day. Thousands of dollars in prize giveaways for you. Enter free all day. Don't miss thousands of dollars in prizes. Ladies' rack and table sale, three dollars and up. Plus thousands of markdowns. Check every aisle. Men's special, seven dollars and up. Save big dollars. Children's boots, ten dollars down. Crazy deals over entire department. And you want bass? We carry large selection bass for men in step with style. That's bass. Friday's the day. Crazy items, one dollar down. Lowest prices guaranteed. Free, one thousand dollars in prizes Friday. The part all. I want to talk to you about your brakes. At Big O, we have extra care. Extra care means our ASE certified technicians will check your brakes, inspect your shocks or struts, along with the vehicle's alignment and lubrication. We then give you a written evaluation and estimate the cost before any work begins. Extra care also means using only warranted parts on every job. Get the extra care you deserve. Big O is much more than a tire store. With Larry Conley and Rob Bromley, Marty Brenneman back at Rupp Arena. Play has been resumed, and a foul apparently has been called on Kentucky as they bring the ball up the floor. It was on Rob Locke. He went up over the back of the Russian player. Ball tried to get lobbed to the inside, and uh, it was deflected. I'm not sure who came up with the ball. Tarakonov, I guess, came up with it, and Locke was on his back. So Tarakonov back in the lineup, and to the free throw line. A field goal for two points. 
Madison, he uses that good body and strong muscle inside for the rebound. I tell you what, he and Bennett in there, it's a couple of four by fours. Manual check by Holmich's. Chapman cross courting to Sean Sutton, runs it down, beating Marcellonas to the ball. Looks like the Russians are playing somewhat of a zone matchup. They are, they're matching up on the inside now. Kentucky trying to combat the Soviet zone. Sutton, Chapman. Watch him hand him over. The cut goes to the corner, nobody goes with him, and they make the adjustment. Just a little bit short. Chapman's bid for a third three-pointer of the half, and Rob Locke picks up another foul, so he gets him in bang-bang fashion. They come in bunches. I tell you what, you can't fault his aggressive play. That's okay. I think early on in an exhibition game, you got to get out there and play with the best of them. And he's gone out there and really worked hard. There's Chapman with a miss. There's Locke with a foul. You talk about wholesale substitution. We get it now. Eddie Davin, Winston Bennett, Reggie Hanson, Cedric Jenkins, and Leron Ellis replacing the five that was on the floor. Is the applause for those leaving or for those coming? I guess it's incidental. Probably a little bit of both. On the free throw line, Alexander Volkov, a non-starter tonight. He, along with Sharunas Marcellonis, reputedly the most talented players on this Soviet team. Free throw missed, and the foul called against Sergei Grishaev. His second personal. We talk about the, the talent on this Soviet team. Interesting story authored by Bill Peterson in the Cincinnati Post today, the party line has been throughout this Soviet tour that the best player in the Soviet Union, Arvidas Sabonis, was left back in the Soviet Union because of an Achilles tendon injury. Bill Peterson reported in the Cincinnati Post today that Sabonis was left back in the Soviet Union because of a fear that he might defect to the United States. Well, Kentucky's still struggling at the free throw line. 28-22 it remains, Kentucky by six. Five minutes to go in the first half. Volkov, nice wraparound dribble, but Ellis, the freshman, stayed right with him. Homages taking Hanson inside, the kick off to Grishayev and a good pass, and the resulting Soviet basket. Homages, nice move on the inside, drew two defenders and kicked the ball to the inside, and now we've got a four-point game. 28-24, Cats. Eddie Davender looks one way, goes the other to Hanson. Marty, they're still playing that matchup zone defense. Hanson momentarily open, but Marcellonis able to recover and pick him up. Here's Ellis. If Kentucky makes a man or a cut through there, you won't see a Russian go with him. They'll just hand him over. They're doing a good job with this matchup zone. Davender behind the screen. He buries a three-point shot. That's the way you beat a zone. Yes, sir. Third three-pointer of the half for Kentucky. Two by Chapman, and now this one by Davender. 31-24, Kentucky gets a bit more daylight. Marcellonis misses there. And it's Senator Jenkins handing it off to Eddie Davender. That field goal by Davender, by the way, his first connection tonight in six attempts. But a big one as he hit for three. Interesting offensive alignment. Bring Ellis up on the top and then roll him low when the ball goes to the corner. Watch him come back out top now. Take the ball from Davender. Almost gave it up. Good recovery by Hanson. Davender puts it up. Homichus has it knocked away. Marcellonis ahead of the field. Now that's the one thing the Soviet Union did to Vanderbilt the other night. They had a lot of run-out baskets. They must have had 10 baskets uncontested, simply running down the floor and just getting an open layup. Kentucky's got to be very careful of that. Now James Dickey was telling me in the blowout against uh, Indiana University, they had a ton of breakaway layups, and they're always looking for it. 31-26, Kentucky. Jenkins double team. Kicks it inside. Bennett foul. Either Homich just got him. And also in there defending for the Soviet Union, Sergei Grishayev. So one of the two picks up the foul. It'll put Winston Bennett on the free throw line. Let's watch this again now. Watch the move down the middle right here. You're going to see the good pass to the inside. Good fake to the right. Roll left. Bennett goes up and draws the foul. Marty, let me draw upon a little basketball expertise here and a little bit of coaching. It looks like to me the Soviet Union is playing a man-to-man -man defense on Kentucky's guards, and they're using the three guys inside as a sort of a triangle zone. 
I watched him make two cut throughs that time. The two defensive guards went with both of Kentucky's guards, but the three guys underneath don't move. They stay in the zone. That's a different look. It really is. Mr. Gamowski's been watching too many of our films. I would say so. 32-26. There are a few coaches around this country seen red over the <laughs> fact that some of the coaches in this country have been helping them. Well, you know, it's a, that's a good topic. And I have to say that I don't, I don't agree or condone what Bobby Knight did the other night in taking his team off the floor, but I do agree with him 100%. I don't think they ought to be allowed to come over here and play. We've got a timeout on the floor with three minutes and three seconds to go in the half. Kentucky in front by seven, 33 to 26, and we will return. Stay with us. I don't think we ought to be. Okay, listen up. Oakley here's filling in for ball tonight. For three years, okay. Bill Oakley Let's took orders. Up the shelf but tonight, all the help we can get. Are you with he's got to stand up and take charge. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. For all the guys who know it's not what you say, but what you do. When you're rocking down the highway, keep your engine rolling with high-performance Valvoline motor oil. The convenient way to get Valvoline in your car is to rock on down to your neighborhood instant oil change. They'll change your oil and oil filter using quality Valvoline, plus perform a 10-point maintenance check all in only 10 minutes. For fast, convenient service, rock on down to your neighborhood instant oil change. Uh, Mom, looking late? Right. Uh-oh. Dad, Mom doesn't do it that way. So, what would Mom do? Parties, children's meals. Okay, in the car. You're the boss. Now at Hardee's, you can get a 24-page Little Little Golden Book in every children's meal box. Be sure and collect all four. Pretty good, huh? Just like Mom. <laughs> the Little Little Golden Book children's meal at Hardee's. <laughs> There is a higher intelligence coming to share a wealth of knowledge and powers. Follow your instincts and welcome them. They are known as Minolta Zoom Copiers. They transform complex functions into child's play and have remarkable endurance. Bring higher intelligence to your office. The Lang Company, for all your copy needs. Kentucky leading by 7, 33 to 26 as we head to the final three minutes of first half action here at Rupp Arena. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the University of Kentucky Athletics Association through Host Communications Incorporated. Solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience, any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and account of this game without the express written permission of the University of Kentucky and Host Communications is prohibited. The announcers for this telecast are employees of Host Communications and have been selected with the approval of the University of Kentucky. Well, the field goal percentage has improved considerably. Kentucky now up to 30%. The Russians have dropped off. They're at 39%. Kentucky's hit five of their last ten shots. Kentucky with a little backcourt pressure, but the Russians not having any problem with it. Keith Sock back in the Soviet lineup. Wildcats have basically stayed with their man-to-man -man defense. Bennett went behind the screen and got burned for it. Sergei Tarakanov hits a long jump shot straight away, and that breaks a bit of a drought for the Soviet Union. They cut the deficit to five at 33-28. Chapman matched up against Keith Sock. Baseline to Davender. Eddie tries to find some daylight. He does, and he made the most of it. Good oh, move. What a great move. move. Oh, what a baseline move by Davin. Seven first-half points for the senior from Brooklyn, New York. It's 35-28, Kentucky. You know, Kentucky really hasn't gone out of that man-to-man -man defense all night. They basically have stayed with it and just uh, tried to play the Soviet Union straight up. And the thing I think that's really been impressive, Larry, the thing that Eddie Sutton was worried about was what we were talking a few moments ago about the Soviets repeatedly beating his team down the floor for easy layups, except for two or three breakdowns. The Kentucky defense has done a good job of getting back. Traveling violation. Eight turnovers against the Soviets. Tarakanov giving a little sign language with his feet right there because I don't think he can speak English. He told the official that he wasn't walked. He was tripped. I think that's what that meant. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You took two years of Russian. Oh, I did. That's right, but I don't know what the word for shoe is. 
I see. I see. <laughs> Kentucky's Rob Locke. Face line to Davender. He's had a hot hand recently, and he keeps it going. In any language, Ed Davender's playing well right now. He has scored nine. His backline colleague Rex Chapman has scored nine, and Kentucky has its biggest lead. It's They're it. up by nine at 37 and 28, and Davender is hit three out of his last four shots. Inside, Grishayev. That looked like a pretty good defensive play. Chapman recovering very quickly, but he committed the foul. You know, Rex gets across that lane so very quickly, even if he gets beat. If his man comes in, drops the ball off, he comes over and gives help on defense like he did there. Watch him make this move across the lane. There's the move. Good inside. Grishoff in good position to go up and lay it up. There's Locke again right there. So Grishayev on the free throw line. 26 years old. 6 feet 10 inches tall. And really, the Soviets have not done a whole lot better, if any at all, than Kentucky has at the free throw line. They've had their problems from that spot. Missed them both. The ball tipped into the hands of Rex Chapman. Stolen back by Marcellonis. Tarakanov. Long rebound to Davender. Davender coast to coast. Rejected by Tarakanov. It looked like he got nothing but ball, but they say foul. That's four fouls unofficially on Sergei Tarakanov. Tarakanov, one of the leading scorers for this Turin team here of the Soviet Union. Davender trying to do it by himself. He's one on four. No white shirts around. Awful lot of basketball on that block. I don't know if he got it or not. The Chapman to the free throw line. One for two tonight. Nine first half points. Tarakanov, meanwhile, on the Soviet bench, shaking his head in abject disbelief over the foul call. And it'll be Davender on the free throw line. I don't know about the decision by Davender that time to take the ball inside one on four. He really should have pulled it back out and set it up. We've gotten into a racehorse basketball game here, and I don't think either club really showing up and really displaying their wares. They're really just playing a kind of a backyard basketball game right now. Davender rattles the iron as he hits his third free throw in four such attempts, 38-28. And that's your biggest Kentucky lead. They're up by 10 with 49 seconds and counting in the first half. Backcourt pressure after the main free throw. Marcellonis kicks it inside to Grishayev, gets it back. Homich's sock. Alexander Volkov drives, finds Grishayev open inside, and the foul. The third against Rob Locke. The basket will count. Oh, Marty, give the Soviet Union credit. Great ball movement. Right around the perimeter. They worked it around the edge, got it to the inside. Volkov made the move and dropped the ball right to the inside to Grishoff. Locke arrived late and drew the foul. Got him more with his body than he did with his hand. So Locke with three personals will leave for the final 36 seconds to be replaced by Laurent Ellis. Been a bruising basketball. Huh. Both clubs are really banging on each other. Three-point play successful. Seven points off the bench for Sergei Grishayev. So the Soviets have committed 14 personal fouls. The Kentucky Wildcats 11. Simple math would show that 25 fouls in all have been called in the first half. The shot clock is off. Kentucky will try to play for the final shot, leading by seven. Put it in the hands of that man right there, one-on-one. -on -one. He puts it up. Sock. Marcellonis, two seconds to go. The jumper by Homich as he beat the clock. Oh, what a pass that time of Marcellonis. Everybody expecting him to take the shot, and he dropped it off to the left side. Great pass. Vladis Homich has got the assist pass from Sharunas Marcellonis and just beat the horn. And what was a 10-point lead just a very brief time ago, all of a sudden trickles down to only five here at the break. As you look at that one play that ended the first half, the pass by Marcellonis, Homich is squared up to the basket with a nice bank from the left side. Bingo, and they go to the dressing room. So at the break here at Rupp Arena in Lexington, the score at halftime.
the Kentucky Wildcats 38, and the Soviet national team 33. Stay with us for our halftime activities coming up after this. <laughs> When you're searching for something better, more modern, refreshing, tune into the taste of new Coke. Catch the wave. Coke. If you had all the experience of yesterday, with all the skill and innovation of today, you couldn't lose. Edwin Moses, USA. There's been some question about the correct pronunciation of this sensible new import. Psst. It rhymes with Sunday. Drive a new 87 Topaz for only $95.95. Every 87 Topaz in stock, only $95.95. Hurry, the cars with the most equipment will be the first to go. Bluegrass, bluegrass has it all. Bluegrass Lincoln Mercury, across from Bluegrass Isuzu. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO. A few years ago, infants with certain lung problems had a 15% chance to live. Today, this technology is giving newborns an opportunity for a full life at Cosair Children's Hospital, the miracle place. Liberty National thanks these dedicated people for all of the love and the care that flows so freely here. Dedication, a word that Liberty understands. There are banks, and there is Liberty. Tonight's game is being sponsored in part by Ashland Oil, Week Insurance, and by your Kentucky Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by First National Bank of Louisville, where you'll find a UK Visa MasterCard. And Hardee's, we're out to win you over. And welcome back to Rupp Arena, where in front of a packed house, Kentucky is leading the Soviet national team here at halftime by five. Kentucky 38 and the Soviets 33. The Wildcats had a five-point lead in the early going. The Russians came back to go up by three. The Cats then leading by as many as ten in this first half before the Soviets cut uh, five quick points off the lead in the final minute of the first half. And it's a five-point game here at halftime, 38-33. Kentucky sophomore guard Rex Chapman is a preseason All-American. I had a chance to spend a little time with Rex earlier this week. We talked about basketball. We also talked about the season that's ahead. Six seconds. Chapman driving, pulls up off the glass. It'll go. We're tied. If there's one thing Rex Chapman thrives on, it's pressure. You know, I think that's that's what makes the game so fun is, uh, you know, you can play for so long and have a game come down to the closing seconds and, and uh, you know, be in a position to win a game. And when you come out on top, there's not a better feeling in the world. Davender, three seconds. Chapman puts it up and good. Holy Toledo. I just go out and try to play as hard as I can. And, as long as I can come in after every game and look myself in the face, look myself in the mirror and, uh, you know, see my face and know that I gave it my best shot, then I don't have anything I can be ashamed of. In just one season, Chapman became one of the most popular players Kentucky has ever had. For the first time in UK history, a freshman led the team in scoring. After most games, Rex talks with his dad, Wayne, the head coach at Kentucky Wesleyan. Does he get on you some? A lot. He, uh, <laughs> it's been a little less lately. He used to get mad at me sometimes when I would play when I was younger and wouldn't play hard or something, but uh, I've kind of gotten a habit of playing hard, and, and uh, he doesn't have as much to get on me about anymore. As for the season ahead, Chapman sees big things on the horizon, hopefully a trip to the Final Four in Kansas City. But the key word is sacrifice. It takes a lot of sacrifice, and uh, you know, I think we're going through some of that right now, trying to... Uh, get our heads right and prepare, prepare for this season because uh, 
I know we were talking about it the other day. Three and a half months is an awful short period of time to give of yourself in order to do something special uh, when you look at it from the standpoint of a whole lifetime. So uh, we're going to try to do that. And here in this first half, Rex Chapman with nine points against the Russians, Ed Davender with ten. Kentucky leading the Soviet national team here at halftime, 38-33. And right now it's time for a station break. This is the University of Kentucky Television Network. Montgomery, Bob Hook, Coyle, Bachman, Park, Bob Smith, Broadway, and Montgomery Chevrolet. This Christmas, Adam's Shoes has what you want for gift giving with specials all this week. Calico's West Wind is on special for $29.99 this week only at Adam's Shoes. The West Wind is a practical gift of quality leather shoes at an under $30 price you'll love. Perfect for that special lady in your life. Adam Shoes has unbelievable specials this week only. Come to Adam Shoes, your Christmas gift giving headquarters. Adam Shoes in the Green Tree Mall, Youngstown Shopping Center, and the New Albany Plaza. Wave 3 is celebrating 40 seasons of a proud tradition with a full day of classic shows and local specials. Enjoy Wave 3 the way we were all day Friday. Don't miss the People's Court tomorrow at 5.30 on Wave 3. We're at halftime here at Rupp, and the Wildcats are on top by five, 38-33 over the Soviet national team. Right now it's time for University Report, so let's turn to Keith Elkins. This is University Report with Keith Elkins. Dr. Glenn Collins of the University of Kentucky Agronomy Department has been described by one UK administrator as one of the most complete professors at the university. In 1985, Dr. Collins received the Crop Science Research Award, a national honor for his work in plant genetics. He has done extensive research in tobacco plant modification and has been a pioneer in research on a process which modifies and regenerates whole plants from single cells. Farmers now must devise means of reducing cost of production, becoming more efficient in production, paying more attention to quality of products, changing the chemistry and the usability, developing new uses for agricultural products, and these are all objectives that modern plant breeding programs have today. Dr. Collins has also received UK's Sturgill Award for outstanding contributions to graduate education, and he has served as Associate Dean for Research in the College of Agriculture, but he especially enjoys working with students. The involvement with the students is a very intimate and integral part of my job, and one that uh, makes it very, very exciting, very enjoyable, and is really the, the dimension to the position that uh, I wouldn't take anything for and uh, I think makes a, a university appointment a, a very, very attractive one. That's good news for agriculture in general and students in particular at the University of Kentucky. The University of Kentucky, a great place to get a college education. Second half action is coming up shortly, but right now let's take a look at this ball game statistically in the first half of play. And as you'll see, the Wildcats did not shoot well at all. 33% from the field, the Soviets at 44%. Look at the rebounds, though. Kentucky with 27, the Soviets with just 16, and a lot of those were on the offensive boards. In the scoring now, Chapman with nine. Ed Davender, however, leading the way with 10 points. Rob Locke had five, Winston Bennett four in that first half, Cedric Jenkins with three. And this is how the scoring looks now for the Soviet national team. Homichus and Marcellonis with nine points apiece. Grishayev chipped in with seven in the first half. And it's Kentucky up by five at halftime, 38-33. Second half action is following immediately. We'll be right back. 99 full of enthusiasm and hopes for a bright future. But in this state, more than one in three students drop out before finishing high school, limiting their chances for a full productive life and our hopes for more jobs and better economic conditions for everyone. 
As parents, keeping our children in school is something we've got to do before our future vanishes into thin air. It's time for lifestyles of the original party animal with the grand poobar of partyometry, Bud Light's own Spuds McKenzie as he's planning tonight's big bash. His fans watch as he tans his way to party elegance. A facial and massage and Spuds McKenzie is ready to party. Yeah! And Spuds parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. In this reconstituted, freeze-dried, pre-mixed world of ours, it's hard to find a breakfast that's totally made from scratch. Syrup on that? Well, at Hardee's, our biscuits are made just that way, with no shortcuts like some other guys use. But then that's probably why they taste so good. And why at Hardee's, we can truly say, we're out to win you over. Once upon a time, shortly before Christmas, Santa was having a hard time carrying his load. A friend told him about his chiropractor. Now, Santa Claus is happy. And when Santa is happy, everybody is happy. United Chiropractic is near you. Most insurance accepted with El No Pay. Little or no out-of-pocket expense. Enjoy the good feeling. Tonight's game is being sponsored. Gets a good start in the second half. That's the way you want to start it. Put the ball in the hands of your best shooter, and that's what Kentucky did. Rex Chapman, good long-range jump shot from the corner. Larry, offensively, it was the first half for the guards, was it not? Yeah, both clubs had their two guards as the leading scorers. Chapman, with that field goal just a moment ago, now has 11. Ed Davender had 10 first half points, while for the Soviets, Sharunas Marcellinus and Vladis Homichus each had nine apiece. And Chapman rings the bell again. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to get some comments from Alexander Gomelski after this game as to what he thinks about Chapman as a guard because he's faced some pretty good guards around the country in the last two weeks. I'll tell you, they have certainly played anything but a soft schedule. Nevada, Las Vegas, Arizona, Vanderbilt, Indiana, North Carolina last night. And, of course, the tour started against the NBA Milwaukee Bucks. Jenkins battling hard to gain possession of the ball inside. And apparently is hit with a foul for his efforts, if not Jenkins and Winston Bennett. Hardy, not only is the Soviet Union team a big team, but they've got very long arms. You know, every guy out there appears to have at least a 35 to 38 inch sleeve length. They've all got extremely long arms. Personal foul on Winston Bennett, number three of the game. Kentucky leading by nine, 42-33. They've scored four points to Soviets, nothing here at the outset of the second half. And the Soviet Union still short. Uh, a little bit more pressure being applied now on the outside by Komichis. He got burned twice. It's time to come out and get him. Rob Locke kicks it inside to Bennett against the taller Bellastini and right back out front to Rex Chapman. Davender finished the first half with an extremely hot hand. Good defense by Sergei Grishayev. He knocks it out of bounds, and Kentucky will trigger again. One thing you notice about the Soviet Union defense is when the ball hits the floor, they're always reaching. Once it comes down, Marcellinus knocked it away that time from Davender in the middle, and now on the inside, Grishayev knocked it away and out of bounds, and it comes back to Kentucky. When the ball's on the floor, they're there knocking it away. Chapman stopping and going. Shoots a reach around. Not a good shot. No. Volkov tips it off to Bellastini. Now Marcellonis back to Volkov. Marcellonis fakes one way, goes the other. Gets it back. Soviet still looking for their first two for the second half. Bellastini on the post. Volkov looks downstairs, goes to the lane, finds an opening, shovels it off. Basket will not count. Offensive foul against Alexander Volkov. He made a nice move down the middle. Kentucky got in good defensive position. He made the pass to Grishoff, low on the post. To no avail, it was a charging foul. Alexander Gomelski, the coach, not very happy with that call. 
All right, let's watch again the defense of the Russians this time. I think they're doing the same thing they did in the first half, where the three guys, big guys inside are zoning, and the two out front are playing man-to-man. -man. Watch the guards go to the corner. They'll go with them, but the other three guys are zoning. There's a steal by Grishayev. Jenkins trying to catch up. Foul, and... Rob Locke slowly being helped up by Bennett. He's all right. Rob Locke right now responding to the cheers and applause of this Kentucky crowd here. Good steal on the outside by Grishoff. You see Jenkins trying to keep up. Watch him go up with the left hand, protect the ball with the body. Locke's right there to reject it, and he put a saddle on and rode Jenkins to the floor. <laughs> and Jenkins got charged with a personal foul. So 42-36. Well, apparently they counted the basket and the free throw. And a six-point lead now for Kentucky. Jenkins looks to give it up and does to Davender. He whips it low to Bennett. Gets it back. Bennett turns, shoots. Ball kept alive by Grishai, and it's out of bounds to the Cats. Leron Ellis checks in for the first time here in the second half. He'll replace Rob Locke. And just a moment ago, the Soviets made a change. They brought on Valery Tionenko, who we look at for the first time tonight. Normally a starter, Tionenko in the lineup for the first time in this ball game, Wearing uniform number nine. He's also one of those players that was drafted in the NBA by the Atlanta Hawks in the seventh round. Nice running one-hander by Ed Davender. Davender with 12. And Rex Chapman with 13. So the two guards have lit him up for 25 of Kentucky's 44. And a good defensive play by Bennett. Kentucky beginning to stretch it out a little bit now. They started off very strong in the second half. Davender and Chapman. He'll try it again. Big guys inside, with Bennett sandwiched in between, and Winston gets his fourth personal foul. Oh, Davender's really had a turnaround night after going one for his first five. He's hit four out of his last six. That's T. Konyanko. Sharunas Marcellonis drives, contact, and a foul on Ed Davender. So four quick. Up, yeah, Kentucky picking up quick team fouls. They've had four now, and we've only played slightly over three minutes. Bennett will sit down with his four personal fouls. Richard Madison comes off the U.K. bench as we look at that play again. Let's watch Sharunas Marcellonis make the move across the middle. You see Davender there hooking with his left arm. Marcellinus gives a good in. Well, there's a throwback. You didn't have to do that. When the ball's taken out of bounds, you can throw it back over the midcourt line. Tete Sock off the dribble. Tete Gonyanko driving. Throws up the running one-hander. He drops Rex Chapman. And the foul goes against the Soviets. First foul against Valery Tikonyenko. He was a hot seventh-round pick in the 1986 NBA draft. Kentucky by eight, 44-36, 16-20 to go. Ball game, we're in the second half here at Rupp Arena. Richard Madison, bounce passing to Ed Davender. All right, I'll tell you one thing, making a cut through this lane is no picnic. No. If you go through there, you're going to get bumped several times, like a pinball machine. Rashayev with a kick out to Teet Sock. Kentucky quickly getting back defensively. We mentioned it in the first half. They've done a pretty good job of getting back to take away the famous Soviet fast break. An excellent defense. The five-second count goes against Sergei Grishayev and the 11th Soviet Union turnover. Good job that time by Kentucky's defense. I know Eddie Sutton's going to be awfully pleased when this basketball game is over with the way his club has played defensively tonight. He told me yesterday he didn't feel like his club was ready defensively, but I think they've played pretty well tonight. I would say so. Chapman, good pass inside. Good recovery by Mark Jelonis. He rejected the layup attempt by Davender. Lost it on the pass. Three on two break. They alley open to Ellis. Whoa! Go on with it. Leron Ellis on the alley open. They bring him to their 
feet at Rupp Arena. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Rex Chapman gets Team Shock on his drive. Let's go back and look at it one more time. Ed Davender with an absolutely perfect pass. Leron Ellis grabbed it right at the top of the rim and jammed it through. It even brought the Kentucky players off the bench. 46 to 36. Oh, what a great move. What a great move. You see Marcellinus right there, a quick <laughs> two steps around Ellis. You don't think he didn't turn it on? He had the afterburners on when he got by Ellis going for that basket. Well, he worked out with the Atlanta Hawks, and after the workout some uh, couple of months ago, Dominique Wilkins said he could start for his ball club. I don't know whose place he takes. I don't either. Have to be Randy Whitman or Doc Rivers. <laughs> well, he's only a youngster, too, 23 years old. He has scored nine points, but is yet to ring the bell here in the second half. And that's the main free throw. It gives Eric Manuel a chance to check back in for Kentucky. And he'll replace Cedric Jenkins. So the freshman comes in for the senior. And Kentucky right now going with Richard Madison, Ed Davender, Rex Chapman, Leron Ellis, and Eric Manuel. They've got their two touted freshmen on the lineup right now playing on the front line. That's Manuel Hanley. Chapman for three. Off of Manuel, and they'll go the other way. Yeah, it might have been a little bit out of Rex's uh, range. He looked like he was about 23 to 24 feet out. He needs about another step in closer to the basket. That really is more his range. We've got a timeout call on the floor. Sean Sutton will be back to join the Kentucky lineup on the floor when we return with 14 minutes and 52 seconds to go in the ball game. The Cats right now in command by a nine-point spread over the Soviets at 46 to 37. When you're rocking down the highway, keep your engine rolling with high-performance Valvoline motor oil. The convenient way to get Valvoline in your car is to rock on down to your neighborhood instant oil change. They'll change your oil and oil filter using quality Valvoline, plus perform a 10-point maintenance check all in only 10 minutes. For fast, convenient service, rock on down to your neighborhood instant oil change. Chilling out with friends, dreaming once again. Someday this won't be pretend. This is your day to share your dreams, and Coca Cola is there with you. It's so real, somehow you feel your dream is coming true. When Coca Cola is a part of your life, you can't beat the feeling. In a few minutes, this phone is going to ring. The person calling will be a banker with First National approving a loan. So what's the big deal? What's special is that the person who applied for the loan called this number on this same phone not 45 minutes ago. And if that doesn't surprise you, how about this? It's now 2.30 on a Saturday afternoon. If you need a loan, any loan, just pick up the phone. Like a good old pair of blue jeans like a signpost up ahead Like a chain theme flick And a fender lick And a look that stops you dead I'm an American Good to you know The first rap beer in the can Tap an ice cold coolant with a friend of yours For a refresh draft beer in bottles and cans That's been Coors for over 25 years Taste the original today Put a 12 ounce keg in your hand Marty Brenneman with Larry Conley and Rob Bromley back at Rupp with just under 15 minutes remaining in the game. Kentucky in front, 46-37. Again, we remind you, the Radisson Plaza Hotel in Lexington is offering a great getaway guaranteed to take the chill off the winter weather. Receive deluxe accommodations and a complimentary breakfast all for just $59. To put some sunshine in your life, call 1-800-333-3333. And as for the winter adventure... 
You know, Marty, there's an interesting situation. There's a difference between international rules and NCAA rules. In international rules, you can touch that ball after it hits the rim. He went up, had the ball on the rim, and that's, that's legal in international play, but NCAA rules, it's goaltending, it goes the other way. You mentioned Sean, Sean Sutton in the Kentucky lineup as Rex Chapman gets some sit-down time on the Wildcat bench. Ellis against Tico Konyenko makes his move. Sutton holds it up, kicks it inside, and steps called against Richard Madison. That is an even 10 turnovers against Kentucky. You know, once in a while you get your shot rejected going in there so often you just feel like you don't want to take it back in. Oh, what a move. Strong Excellent move. move. <laughs> The Larry Gomorov, his first points of the night. That's a bonafide power move right there. 46-39. Kentucky will spurt out 7, 8, 9, 10 points, and the Soviets will come right back with a run of their own. Right now, they trail by 7. Looks like the Soviet Union's back in the straight man-to-man, -man, and there's a foul committed right there by Marcellinus as Ellis made a good move across the lane. Third Soviet team foul here in the second 20 minutes of play. And believe it or not, only the first foul tonight against Sharunas Marcellonis. <laughs> Our stat guy, Dick Gabriel, very invented fella. We have all sorts of ways to describe the Soviet Union. And I think we've seen the gamut tonight. <laughs> we got more to come. Excellent. Again, the Russians back in a straight man-to-man -man defense. They've gone away from that matchup zone, and Davinder's open. He sure is, and he buried. Ed Davinder, 48-39. Marcellonis to the cutting, Tito Konyenko. He spins, turns, shoots, no good. Bellastini's tip wasn't strong enough, and Sutton clears in the corner. You know, it's going to be nice this year, too, as we watch Ellis go to the inside. I'll get to the point in a minute. Let's go ahead and do the play. Davinder, good, good pass. pass to Ellis. Marcellonis leads it up the floor to Teat Sock. He lets fly from downtown. The three-point attempt, no good. Manual, and the Cats go the other way. The point I was going to make, Davinder's in the lineup right now, but it's nice to have Sutton and Manuel who can give Davinder and Chapman a little bit of a breather this year. They played so many minutes last year. You really need that break. If you're going to play 30, 35 college games, these guys have got to have a few minutes on that bench. Well, the one thing Eddie Sutton certainly has more of this year than he did last year is depth. He can run some bodies off of that bench, and we have seen him utilize that bench to the nth degree tonight. Well, there was a point last year where he got down to only seven scholarship players that right. he was playing with. And to have this many bodies, even to go out there in preseason and have the competition for the spots is very important. But it becomes more important during the season when you can reach down on that bench and get somebody that you can put in there that you know is not going to hurt you and give that starter some breathing time. I know at the end of the year last year, Davinder and Chapman were worn out. Right. Well, Larry Gobarov committed the foul, and that puts Leron Ellis on the free throw line. So Kentucky with a chance to extend their lead to 11. And Ellis throws up another brick. She spring throws like his dad. <laughs> Sutton, got it. Sean Sutton. Johnny on the spot. He stuck right in there in the land of the Giants. Took it down and put it back up and in. Good pitch inside. Marcellinus with another assist. And Valery Gomorov scores for the Soviet Union to make it 50 to 41. I tell you, if Gomorov is looking for secondary employment, he looks like a great KGB agent. <laughs> he certainly does. <laughs> Sutton has it knocked away by Marcellonis. He gets his second personal foul. That's five of them here in the second half against the Soviets. And now Alexander 
Volkov comes back in for the Soviet Union. He will replace Valery Tikonenko. Cedric Jenkins back in for Richard Madison for UK. And Rex Chapman will come back. He'll take over for Ed Davinder. Number three, Rex Chapman replaces Ed Davinder. getting a big hand, something that he will probably grow quite accustomed to. And this is final year here in Lexington. Reggie Hansen, foul against the Soviets, and it doesn't take Volkov long to pick one up and coming back. It's a pretty good job there by Hansen to even hold on to the basketball. Not a good inbounds pass at all by Rex Chapman. The UK front line tonight having big time problems offensively. Collectively, they put the ball up 14 times and it had only three hits. Sutton tries to dribble away from the relentless defense of Marcellonis. Here's Leron Ellis. Nothing there. Jenkins to Reggie Hansen. Sutton wheels it inside. Ellis and off the hands of Hansen. Marty, that time it looked like that trip down the floor that Kentucky didn't have anybody who wanted to take a shot. They were just passing the ball around and waiting for somebody to get wide open and no one ever did and no one wanted to take the shot. Kentucky remains up by nine. We've got 11 minutes to go. 50 to 41. The turnaround by Bellastini, and he draws the foul from Leron Ellis. Excellent move by Bellastini. He established that low post position, and when you get that guy on the hip down low, you've got to get him the basketball, and Bellastini knows what to do with it when he gets it there. You know, as rough as this game has been, and we chatted briefly at halftime during the commercial break with one of the officials, Tom Frame, and Frame said this game, as rough as it appears to be, not nearly as rough as it actually is in international competition. Now, if that's the case, and I, you've probably seen some, I have not, it must get real serious. Well, I've played overseas, and I can tell you that it gets very, very rough. In fact, you sometimes feel like you've got to put pads on. Soviet Union only 6 out of 15 from the free throw line tonight. They trail by 7. Hansen relinquishes to Chapman. Sean Sutton will try from the outside. He gets his own missed shot back, plays to Jenkins. Jenkins is reluctant to take yes, the shot. He's going he to have to take is. it. They're just daring him to shoot the ball. They're making the good screens, and they've got some open shots, but look at him. They're backing off of Jenkins. I think the Soviet Union knows he's not going to take the shot. Well, the last time down, Gobarov just backed off about 10 feet, daring him to shoot it, and he wasn't even looking for the shot. Here's Rob Locke. He'll put it up, and a good enough offensive move to draw the foul. Well, scored on Gobarov, his second. Hey, that's a pretty good move by Locke right there, but it was a great move from the other side on the block. Gobarov got across, and they called it uh, goaltending and gave him the basket. They certainly did. That sends Kentucky's lead out by nine points now, 52 to 43, as they count the basket on the goaltending call, and Locke gets a three-point play. So an eight-point ball game for the senior from Reedley, California, Rob Locke. Well, has got to be awfully encouraging to Wildcat fans to sit back and look at Rob Locke, who's been such a mystery also over the last three years for this club. If he comes on and plays well, they could have a tremendous year. We talked about that at the top of the show. The production at the center position has got to be all important for them. There he is again. Yes, sir. Great point goal by he'll roll along. You won't hear a whole lot out of him. And all of a sudden, he'll make the good pass, the big defensive play, or hit a long jump shot as he did just then for three. And just like that, the Soviets are back to him in seven. Come on, come on. Derek Miller, he's not shy. Let's him. Give him a little daylight, and he'll put it up. Locke with a good spin move. He caught Bellastini. Hey, Larry, very impressive. Yeah, he really is. He caught Bellastini on the same type of play that Bellastini got earlier down on the other side. Volkov, throw it up. No good foul call. Derek Miller got him as Volkov went careening into Rob Locke underneath the Soviet basket. It's about 550 pounds of meat yeah. at the floor. Yeah. What's Locke on a good move here? He got Bellastini leaning to the inside, and then he moved to the outside. 
Gabarov not able to get there to block the shot. Good move by Rob Locke. He's had a good basketball game. Only a four-point night for Alexander Volkov. Make it five. And it's 55 Kentucky, 48 the Soviet Union. Rex Chapman, Sean Sutton, Rob Lott, Derek Miller, and Cedric Jenkins. The Kentucky lineup. Oh, look at Volkov out there on Miller. That's 6-9 against 6-5. Yeah. Here's Jenkins. Lost it as he started up with a shot. Soviet ball. 12 turnover against the Wildcats. Sutton did a nice job while he was in there. Yes, he did. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When you can reach down on that bench and pull a player off of there that you can stick in and not get yourself hurt, as Sean Sutton just did for Kentucky, you've got a much stronger club, and it gives Davender a little bit of a blow, and now he can come back and play. Indeed, arrested Ed Davender back in the U.K. lineup. Homages to Marcellonis behind the pick, and he was a step inside the three-point line straight away. And he got locked up in the air with a good pump fake and waited for him to come down, went up and shot it. Soviets as close as they've been in a while, 55 to 50. Eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Miller for three. Inside for the rebound. The Soviet Union, Marcellonis controls, plays to Homich's baseline drive by Volkov. It's a three-point game. I'll tell you, these guys do not quit. They will come back. North Carolina played them a very similar type game last night. Very close. Well, the feeling was if you can hold them under 70 points, you got a heck of a chance of beating them. Carolina held them to 71 and beat them 73-71, and this is going to end up being a relatively low-scoring game. I think much lower than really what we expected. Oh, no, absolutely. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact, Larry, that neither team has shot well. Davender has after a slow start. 16 points for Ed Davender. A much-needed basket for the home team. It's 57-52. They had a clear out right there on the left side. Now they're moving the ball around. There are a lot of screens up top. There he is again. Marcellinus misses it. Now Davender. Wrap around, dribble. He shovels it off. Derek Miller. But a whistle stop play. That play started to develop into quite something else. Marcellinus grabbed Ed Davender as he started down the middle. He put that little move with that dribble behind the back and was getting ready to make the behind-the-back pass and the whistle had blown. Davender showing you a little bit of his offensive skills. Well, Sharunas Marcellonis, who did not pick up a foul in the first half, has now been whistled for three of them here in the second. Alexander Bellastini sits down. Sergei Grishayev comes back in for the Soviets. And the men in red said, we want time out. At the request of head coach Alexander Gomelsky. So with time on the floor, 7.25 to go. And the University of Kentucky Wildcats lead the Soviet Union 57-52. Don't go away. We'll be back. Red. Oh, Red. Red. If you leave, where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I'd get a ground-coupled heat pump. It could save you up to 50% on your heating bills. Make sure your money won't be gone with the wind. Call your rural electric cooperative about a money-saving ground-coupled heat pump. I'll call about it tomorrow. A message from the member cooperatives of East Kentucky Power. America sells more vehicles than number one. Your Ford dealer. And to celebrate, he's having a number one sales drive on all his 87 and brand new 88 cars. Now get free factory air conditioning or free automatic transmission on specially equipped Ford Escorts. America's number one selling car. Or save over $700 on a specially equipped Ford Taurus. America's number one selling midsize car. Plus, there's even factory to dealer cash incentives that can be passed on to you for additional savings. All where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. When we sold this beauty in our showroom in 1946, it came with a 90-day or 3,000-mile warranty. Hello, I'm John Donhair, president of Barley Ford. Today's quality Ford vehicle includes a 6-year or 60,000-mile warranty. So if you think about it, you're buying much more than a car. You're beginning a long-term partnership with your dealer. You know, Barley Ford's been number one in customer satisfaction ever since Ford's been giving awards. 
That's just one of the reasons we're Louisville's oldest Ford dealer and the best reason why your next Ford should be a Barley Ford. To look at these cards, you'd think the University of Kentucky was getting in the credit card business. Well, they are, sort of. Now, First National Bank is offering special Visa and MasterCards that make automatic contributions to university programs every time you use them. Apply at First National for your University of Kentucky Visa or MasterCard. Supporting UK is just that easy. Rockets lead by five, 57-52, with 7.25 remaining. If you're wondering when we'll next be with you again, well, you don't have long to wait. Join us on most of these stations Saturday night, November the 28th, this Saturday night, when the Wildcats officially open the regular season against the rainbows of Coach Riley Wyatt, the University of Hawaii, right here at Rupp Arena. Our live telecast starts at 8 p.m. Eastern and 7 o'clock Central Time. This Saturday night, the University of Kentucky Wildcats against the University of Hawaii Rainbow. What we need to do is talk to Coach Sutton about having that game return the next year and make sure that you and I are there to do it. You know, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's an excellent idea. <laughs> Better yet, get in the Rainbow Classic so we can go over there for about 10 days. In the second half, field goal percentage, Kentucky shooting 48% on 9 of 19. The guys from the foreign land, 7 of 14, shooting 50%. And Eddie Davender, who has had a good night at the free throw line. <laughs> Davender's hit four out of five from that spot. He has scored 17. He leads the Cats in scoring. <laughs> Kentucky by seven. 59-52. Just watch the screens this time being set by the Soviet Union. They really have been coming out much higher on their screens. They're packing it down low. They'll make one or two cuts off of this offense, the low stack, and then there's the open. Nice play by Winston Bennett. How about that for hands? Davender taken inside. Couldn't score it. Second time around. Got it. Looks at 6-2 going up against 6-8, 6-10, and 6-11. 20-point game for Ed Davender. And Kentucky with a spurt, led by Davender, leads now by nine at 61-52. Baseline jump shot on the way and good for Valeri Goborov. Well, that's a big pass to my Goborov. Yeah. They needed that one. Meanwhile, Alexander Bellastini at the scorer's table getting ready to come back in. Davender not only has scored 20 points, he has also hauled down seven rebounds. So he has not been shy inside against this very tall Soviet team. And that's a foul, or is it? Nope, a timeout has been called by Kentucky coach Eddie Sutton. So Ed Davender giving the Wildcats a little bit more breathing room with 6.24 remaining in the game. He was known all around Kentucky. The railroad nicknamed him Casey because he was from Casey, Kentucky. And they had so many Joneses, they couldn't keep up with him. Well, nobody could keep up with Casey. He drove the cannonball itself, the fastest train on the rails. One day, there was a stalled freight train right in the cannonball's way. Casey stayed with the engine, slowed it down, and saved every passenger. He was a hero. The true story of Casey Jones, brought to you by Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Hey, how you doing? Good. In fact, I feel like light. Hey. Hmm. What the? Uh-oh. Oh, I am so. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh. Well, I meant Bud Light. If you want the less filling light with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Because everything else... You all right? Sure, just a little lightheaded. It's just a light. This Christmas, a lot of kids just might go to bed with visions of baby-bound puppies. And baby-bound purries dancing in their heads. Well, every time you buy any sandwich, fries, and a drink at Hardee's, you can get one of the babies for only $2.49. There's a new one every week, so by Christmas Eve, you could have all five. Which might give you the chance to make some dreams come true on Christmas morning. 
Pontiac makes them hot. The Pontiac Pros of Kentuckiana make them affordable. Drive 88 Pontiac Fiero at one hot price, just $89.99. Want Pontiac performance and style? Drive Pontiac Bonneville. Want Pontiac excitement? Drive Pontiac 6000. Both price hundreds less than the competition. Want it hot? Make it Pontiac. Want it affordable? See the Pontiac Pros of Kentuckiana. Cross, Green Tree, Brinkhouse, Browning, Harden Motors, Sam Swope. Well, we've got just over six minutes remaining in the game. 61-54, Kentucky. They let it to break the Cats did by five, 38-33. They've been up by as many as 10. And Larry Conley, every now and again, the Soviets will make a run, but whatever it takes, a big hoop by somebody for Kentucky to get them out in front again. Well, the guy that's really carried them in the second half, I think, has been Davender. They needed a big basket, a key basket. He's been there to get it for them. I'm going to say Locks played pretty well also in this basketball game, pretty much through the whole ball game. Although he hasn't scored a whole lot, he's been around. He's done a few things. He's been very active. I think much more so than he was last year. I've been very impressed with the way Kentucky's played tonight. Chapman is back in, joining Davender in the backcourt with Rob Locke, Winston Bennett, and Richard Madison. Now look at this defense. There's Davender taking advantage of it. He got it to Bennett. Yep, and he was fouled. Valeri Gobarov commits his third foul all here in the second half. Bennett will go to the free throw line. I guess the one thing that if there ever was a question to be answered from Eddie Sutton's standpoint concerning the intensity with which Winston Bennett would play this game, this play right here pretty gives you a pretty good indication. He's not shied away at all tonight. Not at all. Davinder got the ball to him in the right position, right there on the baseline. He took it up with that strong body. You know, I'm wondering, Marty, I'm sitting here watching this basketball game, and I'm wondering if Alexander Domelski has picked up a chapter out of Dale Brown's book. I wonder if he's not using that crazy defense he's got down there that he uses at LSU because it's very similar to what they use at LSU. It's a man-to-man -man out front and they zone three guys underneath and it, and it seems like a, I've done a couple of LSU games in the NCAA tournament the last couple of years and it's very similar to that. Here's Homich just off the baseline. Boy, did he throw off the line drive. There's Bennett. He snaked his way through for the rebound, and Holmich is trying to follow up his own missed shot, and all he got out of it was a personal foul. You know, if you're coming into this game and you're going to play Kentucky and you know nothing about them except what you've seen written, you're going to see everything written about Chapman and Davinder, and you're going to set up your defense to try to shut those two guys down. But what they forget about is that Kentucky's inside players are vastly improved over last year. And I think the fact that Davinder and Chapman might have the ability to get a little bit more assist this year. They're going to find some open people underneath, right. which will open up the shots for them. Bennett now five out of eight from the free throw line. That is the sum total of his scoring productivity tonight. He's not had a field goal. Kentucky up by eight with 6.01 on the clock, and he'll have one more coming. Denied. There's the pressure off the main free throw. Volkov cross courts to Homages. Bennett, Madison trying to trap the lead pass to Volkov. That is a pretty good strategy by Eddie Sutton. He went back and put the pressure on them again. Made them or forced them to do something with the lead. Well, Locke doing a nice job on Vestalini underneath. Bellastini rolls back to the basket. Good help out defense by Winston Bennett. Goberoff. And a foul against Kentucky. Foul is on Locke. Four personal fouls on Rob Locke. And it's Goberoff shooting at the free throw line. He's had three field goals. First time on the line in this ball game, and he buries it for point number seven. I would expect in the next minute to minute and a half, you might see the Soviet Union come out full court pressure because they, they don't have a lot of time left with 5.30 to go, and they're down by eight. Bellastini, he keeps it for his club. And it's Goberoff. Marcellonis. Well, Kentucky getting beat badly on the boards right now. Bad pass. Ill-advised pass by Sharunas Marcellonis. He should have gone ahead and taken the shot. 15 turnovers now against the Soviets. Block. Rejected out of bounds by Goberoff. Kentucky will keep it. 
I think Gomorov got burned that last time. He was not going to get burned <laughs> again. <laughs> he was in great position that time to help. Watch him underneath. He'll beat Bellastini underneath. There's Gomorov right there with the rejection. Out of the bright pocket, it's Eddie Damander. Ah! Saved by Madison. To the hoop. Rejected. Locked. Yes. Strong move by Madison, a smart move by Locke. He was right there to get that ball that was rejected. He laid it in. Rob has scored a dozen, and Kentucky right back in front by 10 points. <laughs> Getting down now to short time for the Soviet Union. Homachus takes Chapman to the basket. Oh, and he took him to put a clinic on him for him, too, on a one on one move. 11 points for. Vladis Holmichus, 65-57, Kentucky with 4.15 to go in the game. Kentucky has out-rebounded the Soviets, 42-28. Bennett! Oh! Just off the front lip of the rim, but again he'll go back to the free throw line. Well, it's nice to see Winston Bennett healthy and playing yep. basketball again. I know that was a great disappointment for him last year. You know, he got three screws and a staple in that knee. I mean, they had to totally reconstruct it. And Marty, when something like that happens to you, you've been athletic, around athletics as long as I have, it not only physically is tough on you, but it's mentally tough on you because the pain of rehabilitation that you have to go through, even when you get the knee fixed, you always wonder, is it going to happen to me again? And you, wor you worry about that. He's come out here tonight, and he's the type of player who has to play a banging type game. It's his type of game. He's got to play that way. He cannot play soft, and Eddie Sutton told him that when practice started this year. And it's nice to see this young man back and playing again. Free throw attempt. Kentucky has outscored the Soviet Union. Very insightful statistic here. 18 to 3 off of offensive rebounds. Well, that really is something. That gives you a pretty good indicator of how impressive, truly impressive, the Kentucky frontliners have been tonight. We say frontliners, hey, Ed Davenders had seven rebounds in addition to leading his club in scoring. Three-point attempt. Deep shot for Homichus fails to get it to go, and here comes Davenders. Yeah, he got smart that time. Yeah. He brought it back out. He saw too many red shirts. The numbers weren't there. Bellastini giving Bennett the opportunity if he wants to put it up. Winston wants to get closer and now plays back to Jenkins. Kentucky by nine. Three minutes and a half to go. Ball knocked away. Recovered by Jenkins. Put it up. No good. That'll recycle that shot clock. It was a good break. They got the shot. Got the ball back. the second shot that Jenkins oh, yeah. has taken. And there's a guy who has not shot a whole lot here in the second half. Two-pointer by Rex Chapman. 15 points tonight for Chapman. Homacher starts inside on Madison and now backs off but keeps the dribble alive. Sharunas, Marcellonis, Victor Volkov, Marcellonis for three. Hello. You know, Marty, they do that a lot. Marcellonis made the pass and went inside. He made a cut, stepped right back over the line. They kicked it back out, and he made the three-point shot. We'll see a lot of that and probably see it in South Korea next year in the summer of 88. 68-60. So the Soviets still hanging in, but the, the numbers on the clock really working against them big time now. That's a foul on Jenkins. And a three-pointer by Chapman I don't think will not count. I don't think they'll count it. No, nope. the foul on Jenkins. He hammered Sharunas Marcellonis. This game is not out of reach yet for the Soviet Union. They're still hanging in there. An eight-point lead is not a lot, particularly when you've got a shooter like Marcellonis from the outside. And he's on the free throw line. He has scored 19 points to, to lead the Soviets, and he gets his 20th. 
He's also two of five from the three-point range. 68-62. It's been just that type of ball game. Foul. Keith Sock got him from behind at midcourt. I think we could have made that call. Yeah. We were sitting here looking at it. This the wind up of the tour for the Soviet Union. They'll be heading back home after spending another night or spending tonight here in Lexington. And right now, if the Kentucky lead stands up, they'll be going back to the USSR with a 6-4 and four record on the heels of having won eight and lost six on the tour of November of 86 in the United States. Yeah, there are very, a number of very good European teams. This happens to be one of them. West Germans are very good. Spain's very good. Yugoslavia, who won the Olympics the last time out, got an excellent team. And who can forget about the team down in South America, Brazil, who won the uh, silver or the gold medal up in Indianapolis this summer. Oscar Schmidt had the big game against Denny Crum's team in the gold medal game. Davender's done a whole lot of good things tonight. 70-62 Kentucky. Defense! Triple screen for Marcellonis that time. Defense! They're trying to get it to him. Defense! Kentucky doing a nice job of shutting him down. There's a three-point attempt by Holmichus, and that was from another time zone. Oh! That was NBA shot. Yes, sir. His second three-pointer of the night. It's a five-point game, and we've got a minute 59 seconds, and the clock stops right there on the backcourt foul against Vladis Holmichus. So Richard Madison to the free throw line to shoot him. He has scored two points, both from the free throw line in as many attempts. Front three-point range, Kentucky is three of nine, and the Soviet Union is four of 14. Ah. So they really haven't shot a whole lot better from three-point range tonight than they did last night against the Tar Heels. Soviet Union now with an opportunity to get within two or three. Homages, Bellastini. Homages, look Again out for three. Here they come. A two-point game at 70 to 68. Kentucky has all but squandered a 10-point lead late here. 90 seconds remaining. They double-team Davinder and very quickly he gets it off to Rex Chapman. Well, Coleman just hit two big three-point field goals, long-range field goals. Chapman starts and stops. Puts it in the hands of Ed Davinder. Timeout. Signaled by Davinder and the Kentucky Wildcats. So the clock stops with a minute and 15 seconds. When the Cats come back, there will be 22 seconds on the shot clock, and they lead by only two over the... Oncoming Soviet Union, 70 to 68. of today you couldn't lose fried chicken thursday how time flies oh no i'm meatloaf monday my fish stick friday reporters do you had all tuna tuesday and hamburger wednesday dad my slumber party is a spaghetti saturday we'll be home early spare rib sunday oh dad Ever get into a recipe rut where the same meals turn up like clockwork? Kroger can help with a free and terrific recipe each week. Chicken piccata. Isn't it Tuesday? I thought it was Monday. Alex's recipe of the week, because a little help can make a difference. No one in America sells more trucks than number one, your Ford dealer. And to celebrate, he's having a number one sales drive on all his 87 and brand new 88 trucks. Now get $500 cash back on America's number one selling full-size pickup, Ford F-150. On America's number one selling compact pickup, Ford Ranger. Even on every Ford Bronco 2. Add to that free factory air conditioning on specially equipped models. All before you get your best deal, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. 
when my wife found out that Long John Silver's is offering four Norman Rockwell mugs for the holidays for just 99 cents a piece, who do you think was first in line? Bingo. This holiday season, come in for your Rockwell mugs and get another great classic. Long John Silver's shrimp, fish, and chicken dinner for the low holiday price of just $3.99. Long John Silvers. And uh, don't forget your mugs. Well, we go to the final minute and 15 seconds, and all of a sudden, the Soviet Union on the strength of two bombs by Vladis Holmichus, and we'll take a look at one of them right here. There's uh, the shot right off on the right side. He's outside of the NBA. Now he stepped inside the three-point range from NBA line, but he's still got it, and it's a three-point play, and he hit two of those. Got the Soviet Union within two. Indeed, that was the second of back-to-back -back three pointers, and the first one was much longer than that one. It's 70-68, Kentucky with the ball. 22 seconds on the shot clock, a minute 15 remaining in the game. Rob Locke in trouble, and he's fouled as Homer just tried to create a loose ball situation. It looks as if they're going to try to make Kentucky beat them at the free throw line. They're going to take them up there and they try to go to the other end and shoot those three-point goals. And Komachus, you've got to believe, is going to be one of those shooters. Right now, the Soviet Union's got three guards in the lineup. They've got Sok on one side there, Komachus in one side, and Marshallinas the other. So they've got their three-point shooters in the lineup. And the brain trust right there. You saw Alexander Gamalski and Ivan Adeshko. And they fouled the wrong guy, Rob Locke. He missed his first free throw attempt tonight. And counting that hit right there, he's made five in a row. Two big ones by the senior from California. Four-point lead, Kentucky. All right, big defensive trip now for the Cavs. They've got to come up with a basketball or get a turnover. They're looking for the hot shooting homages. Marcellonis. Checked by Davinder. Here's a drive. Homichus throws it up and in. Oh, what a final three minutes of the game he's having. The Russians have gotten real serious real late. 72-70, 45 seconds to go. And a foul in open court against Sharunas Marcellonis will put Rex Chapman on the line. Chapman had nine points in the first half. He's come back with six here in the second, but this will be his first trip to the free line. After making one for two from that spot early in the game. He had a real quiet second half. You know, he hit those first two field right. goals early in the second half and then kind of just kind of sat back and let Davinder carry the load tonight. Ed Davinder's had an excellent offensive game. Billy, Billy. Oh, and a foul on Madison. He went over the top of Teach Sock. So now, with 43 seconds to go, the Soviets can tie it up. Well, that 10-point lead really evaporates quickly when you've got that three-point goal. I tell you, you can count on one hand the number of different times Kentucky has led. I mean, uh, the Soviets have led in this game. like to make that trip back to the Soviet Union a little bit shorter. First point tonight for Teach Sock. 72-71 Wildcat. Now it's important if he misses here. You can't let the Russians get the inside and get the rebound. All right, he made it. We've got a tie game. Kentucky can hold it for the last shot. They don't want a turnover here. They can take it to the buzzer. The shot clock is dark. Ed Davinder controls at center court to Richard Madison. Put the ball in the hands of your good ball handlers. 30 seconds to go. Well, Marshall Lynn is doing a great job on Chapman. That's Madison with the ball matched up against Alexander Volkov. And Kentucky stops the clock with 19 seconds to go. It is dead even at 72-72. You've had Davinder with a great second half. You've had Chapman, who has been relatively quiet. Kentucky led by 11 points with 12 minutes to go. And on the hot outside shooting of Vladis Holmichus, the Soviets have come back to tie it up. What do you do now? Well, Marty, I think the first thing Kentucky's got to consider is they've got to go to one of their two hot shooters. And it's either going to be Ed Davinder or Rex Chapman. 
Right now, the guy's on the inside. You've got to look at Locke because he's had some pretty good moves on the inside. I believe I'd try to get the ball in the hands of Ed Davender and let him try to work a one-on-one -on -one play. And if they slough off and pick him up, maybe he can kick the ball to Chapman for a good two-point or an 18, 20-foot shot. Larry, the Soviets are really getting after him defensively. They really are. In the last four or five minutes, they've really picked it up. And Kentucky's defense has really slackened up. They're not really putting that pressure on like they were in the first half and the early part of the second half. They kind of backed off a little bit. And as evidence for the fact that Komachis took, or Komachis took those shots out front, they really had no one on it. Well, Kentucky will have the ball with 19 seconds to go. Do we see a game of 40 minutes or... Could we possibly go to overtime? The final 19 will dictate that. Eddie Sutton has mapped out what he hopes will be winning strategy. Trying to get the teams out of the huddles right now. And the horn definitely sounded, but both coaches, Eddie Sutton of Kentucky and the Soviets, Alexander Gomelsky, in effect ignore. Now we get the clarification. Gomelsky has called a timeout. So the move and the counter move. Off the bench tonight, uh, the Soviet Union has gotten 20 points from uh, their group, and Kentucky on the other side has only gotten 11 points off of their bench. Uh, that's really not an indicative figure because the way Eddie Sutton has moved his players in and out tonight, he's wanted to take a look at a lot of different combinations out there. And I think uh, what we've seen so far for a game in late November, I think has been pretty good on their part. What do you derive uh, from playing a game like this, Larry? And, you know, you're playing a team that is recognized that possibly having the second best amateur basketball program in the world in the Soviet Union behind the United States isn't a tremendous benefit to college kids to take on a team that basically is older on the average. Well, as I said at the top of the show, it's important to play a game right now. And I think it's important to play the best you can because it gets you ready for a tough college season. Kentucky's December schedule is brutal. Yeah. I mean, they really play a lot of very tough games in December. And this gives them an opportunity to really find out what these kids are made of. This is a tough team, but I think tonight they play well enough to show that they are going to be pretty good this year. Here we go. Well, here we go. Final 19 seconds. Chapman acting as a trigger man. He plays to Bennett, and he's fouled immediately. Teach Sock was on him like a cat on a June bug, and the whistle came very, very quickly from Tom Frame. Even if we could take a camera into the huddle, I don't think we could have told you what the Soviet Union was going to do with strategy. <laughs> but I can tell you that putting the ball in the hands of Bennett, I am sure that Coach Gomelski probably told his club to foul him. Winston, 7 out of 11 from the free throw line. Got to have him now. That's why you're here. Is there ever any doubt? 73 72. Eddie Sutton, James Dickey now directing their attention from the UK bench to Ed Davender, who stands at center court ready to go to defense and two great signals by Bennett. Two point Kentucky lead. 15, 14, 13, 12 seconds to go. They come to their feet here at Rupp. Pete Sock. Jerunas Marcellonis gets the pick. The three-point goal attempt, no good. Chapman rebound. Two seconds to go. And a foul is called to stop the clock. The whistle against Alexander Volkov. Well, Larry, Marcellonis got the shot he wanted. He did indeed. He just didn't make it. Four seventy-two, Kentucky. Watch it again. You're going to see the screen set up for Marcellonis. Good pass right there. Komichis finds him on the right side. Marcellonis makes a good move to the right, comes back to the left. Look at Davinder get hung up on the screen. Good job right there that time. It looked like Locke who came out. I think it was Locke that came out and uh, called Marcellonis to maybe elevate his shot a little bit and throw it off. Bellasini set the good screen. They had everything they wanted. The shot didn't go. And now Chapman can put it out of reach. But nope. He keeps the Soviet cause alive with only three seconds to go. Marty, that was an intentional okay, foul. So Kentucky will have possession after the two free throws. So 
So Kentucky ball, three-point lead, three seconds remaining. Run out. Run out. Yep. Somebody run out. Goes inside to Bennett. And with one tick of the clock remaining, he's fouled. Well, the Soviet Union will head home suffering losses back-to-back -to, -back to nationally ranked ball clubs. North Carolina last night and the University of Kentucky here at Rupp Arena tonight. I think more important than the fact that Kentucky won this game tonight was the fact that we saw Bennett come out and do some things tonight that we hoped he was going to be able to do, and he has done them. And I think that's a positive sign and a very encouraging sign for the season for Kentucky. On the other side, you've also got to look at the inside play. I think Locke, while he didn't score a great deal, really played pretty decently on the inside, right. and I think that's an encouraging sign. You know you've got those two guards out front that are going to play well for you all year long. You've got a good bench that you can reach down now and pull some people off that can give you some aid. I think this is a basketball team that's going to have a pretty good year. Well, we are apparently waiting for one more Soviet player to come on the court. And he will finally do that right now. Dmitry Minayev, six foot ten inch youngster, will come in to give him the full complement of five players. Meanwhile, over on the Soviet bench, Tarakanov with a video camera out, getting some memories on tape of Rupp Arena and what turned out to be a three-point loss tonight to the University of Kentucky. It was nip and tuck in the last minute plus when the Soviets came back, but in the end, Kentucky hangs on to post a 75-72 victory. And all the things that you talked about, Larry Conley, in the top of the telecast, uh, I'm sure Eddie Sutton was not overly pleased with his offense tonight. He had to be pleased with the way his ball club banged the boards. The production he got out of his... On Sunday at midnight on Wave 3. Now stay tuned for UK Basketball.